Hi, I'm Reagan Tunstall from Tunstall's Teaching Tidbits, and today we're going to be talking about differentiation in small group. Um, last week we focused just on small group, and I did touch on differentiation, but today I'm going to share both kinder and fit in small group and what I do, what process I go through for differentiation. Um, when we differentiate, um, it's done in the small group setting. So we teach our math warm up, that is, whole group math meeting and uh, we are not differentiating there except that we are each sharing our knowledge with each other and that of course will be at our own levels but I am not using that as a time to differentiate to meet individual needs and then we move into our math mini lesson and that is again whole group so my purpose there is introduce and stay conceptual and kind of teach to that level playing field but now it's time to pull them to the small group, which we talked about last week. We modeled a lesson there. Um, and now today, I'm just gonna model snippets of two different lessons and what I would do to differentiate so that we can really kind of build on that. Now, I'm generally speaking here because I don't actually have the students in front of me, which means that what I may or may not do would be different if I was seeing something out of an individual student. So I'm gonna try my best to show you that process. But again, I don't have the students. So um, but we're gonna start with unit five from the Hand to Mind Understanding Subtraction Kit of Guided Math. This is unit five, and I've said it before, but the units can be taught in any order, and I will link them um, and in the description for you. In this lesson, this is lesson 13, so we're into the unit by now. Students have an idea of subtraction. Uh, our lesson objective is that we will use objects and drawings to model the action of separating to represent subtraction. So we are in the representational um, developmental level, and that's the goal in this lesson. Now where I differentiate is if I have students who are still in the concrete or if I have students who are very much comfortable in the representational and ready for the abstract. So that's going to be where I'm looking and assessing those students as we go. Now in our whole group mini lesson before I pulled them we read the book Goodbye Bugs which shows representations of sets of bugs, how many are left, and we are saying the value, and then we are talking through separating three from the first set, and each page is a different set of bugs, like that, a little subtraction for you. So, when I come to small group, I've got, um, every lesson comes with a, an independent practice page. Now, as you know, when students work by drawing with numbers and symbols only, that means that they are in the more abstract understanding of the concept. But this does not apply to all of my students and it is not the goal of this small group lesson. It's there for differentiation. So that means my students who are showing me absolute mastery on representational subtraction are going to get to do this worksheet with me because it's developmentally appropriate. But my students who are not yet here, I'm not even gonna worry about it because it's not what they need yet. And then what you'll find in the small group lesson, um, I know it's hard to see, are cards, bug cards. So the, the numbers represent how many bugs would go in the subtraction problem. I separated them by greater than five and less than five, and there are just randomly mixed piles of um, a bug a bug icon and then a digit. That's how we're gonna make our equations. Um, for my students who are still in the concrete, which means they need to use a strategy such as building it and separating it physically, there's going to be the concrete um, bug cards, which is using a 10 frame and then the two jars represent the two sets of bugs. So, um, we name it and claim it in my class. So if I'm gonna work on a strategy with a group, I'm gonna tell them the strategy we're using and they are going to name it and then we're gonna practice and apply it. So if I have students who are still concrete, we are gonna be using the build it strategy and we're going to be using the mat. 
and if I have students who are in the representational, which is what this lesson is targeted to, which is um, where we're separating, we might make, use a strategy such as make X's. And the X's mean that we're separating those from the group. Um, and then another strategy that I might have already introduced or I may be introducing is the draw it. So we're gonna draw the first set of bugs and then we're going to make X's to separate. So we're kind of combining two strategies here on this one. So again, that's three different ways to differentiate. We're gonna have the build it's who are still in the concrete. So we would pull that first card, we would build that on our 10 frame, then we would pull the second card and say we will separate or minus four bugs, and we would separate those from the card. If we're in the representational, then we may still build it just as a backup, as a reference, but we're gonna spend most of our time um, drawing eight and then Xing out eight. Um, to separate and saying our answer. And if we are ready for the abstract, then we can count and write that number and then count and write our second number and even X those out to get our answer there. So I just wanted to show you how you can differentiate these lessons and move your students through that continuum of concrete, representational, and abstract. So now we're going to look at a fifth grade lesson. All right, I'm back. So um, I don't know if I mentioned it before, but I wanted to share just a tiny bit about the manipulatives out on the table. So because it's February, I want to keep engagement high. So I like to each month or each couple of weeks pull out some new, fun, exciting, thematic type of manipulatives. Anything goes um, from erasers to candy to whatever, but something to entice students. I don't necessarily have it all out like this every day as it's pretty overwhelming and then they'll just be more worried about this, but something exciting to have students come and learn about algebraic expressions, right? We wanna get excited about it. So for your students who have less fine motor, and need larger items to grip, you wanna make sure you've got larger items and then for your more um, developed with um, their agility students, then you can have the smaller, more intricate pieces that just makes it a little more fun. Okay, so today for fifth grade, we're going to be doing unit seven, algebraic reasoning, and I will definitely link that in the descriptions. Um, this lesson is about halfway through the unit and it is our objective is that students will write algebraic expressions to record calculations now for the mini lesson and again that's where i wasn't differentiating we just did a really quick mini lesson where um i invite students up and i say wait where's my marker here it is i say that you are going to grab a number of manipulatives and then I'm going to give you four more. So they will come up and grab whatever number it is. We'll count it out and I'll say, okay, and I want you to add four more. And so then we will write X was the number you grabbed plus four. And we will write whatever that answer is. Then I'll invite second student up. I'll say, I would like you to choose from a different manipulative, grab a number, what did you get? I want you to add four, I'll give them four more. And again, we will write X plus four equals and whatever it equals. So we might do this with three or four students. Um, and once we've done that, where they each chose a different number of manipulative and we added four to it, I will then say um, the X represents the numbers that you chose and those numbers were varied so we didn't give it a number, we gave it a letter. And that is just called a variable because it's not going to be the same number every time. So when you see that letter, that's going to be a variable that we will figure out. So that's just that intro. Remember that's very conceptual and it's just keeping it on that level playing field. So now that they have that basis of understanding, they're gonna to come to the small group with me. And our objective is that students will write 
expressions. So we're gonna start with an easy one and I'm gonna say, okay, let's use the one that we had up at the mini lesson. So let's say we had um, X plus four, right? But now I want to multiply that times five. So naturally the students will just do this and then we'll talk about the order of operations and what we know about writing expressions with the order of operations. So we want to add x plus 4, but then we want to multiply the answer of x plus 4 times 5. So we need to add in those parentheses to keep the order of operations straight. So we're going to add first and then whatever the total is there, the sum, we're going to multiply times 5. So we just do that as a group. Yep, I remember that. I know how to do order of operations. I've got it, teach. So now we're ready. Um, what I'm introducing to my students in small group that I'm going to differentiate is that they will be taking scenario cards four times as many as Z plus six. Um, and each one is different. Subtract the quotient of A and two from H. So they are now going to be writing the algebraic expressions for the different scenario cards. And they're doing this in front of you so you can see how they're doing with it. Add to y, I'm sorry, add y to the product of two and five. So they have to know that, oh, am I multiplying? Am I subtracting? What am I doing? So it's a great way to see how they're doing with writing algebraic expressions, to see how they're doing with order of operations, um, and then for my kiddos who need an extra challenge, what they are going to do is I will write out an algebraic expression for them and they will write this. They will write the scenario out. So it's that reverse thinking where they have to know, should I be using words like product? Should I be using quotient? Should I be using, uh, so whatever. Whatever it is, they have to be able to write those. I'm also going to be having them solve for that and not just my my kids who are above but everyone so they are still grabbing a number so let's say student one here grabbed two four six eight so their variable was eight so they're gonna say hmm eight plus four is twelve 12 times 5 equals, and so they're actually going to be working these out, not just writing the algebraic expression. All right, so I hope that helps you with differentiation. I forgot to mention that just like I do with the younger grades where I'm saying the strategy card and the name, I continue that on through with the upper grades and say this is the strategy we're using. These are the words we know. All it does is it empowers them it says I know this strategy I know how to do this type of problem I know what it looks like I can recognize an example of it or a non example of it and it's just empowering them and giving them that um, confidence to be able to do these problems and actually enjoy them and feel as though they are um, right on target on level whether they are or not because we're able to differentiate all right, so I hope this is helpful and I will see you next week.